to another video, folks. Welding and cutting, oxyacetylene edition. All right, guys. So, uh, hope you saw the safety. Video. Make sure you check out that safety video, okay? So I'm using a 3 3 second uh, steel plate. I'm going to cut right through that with this torch. I'm using a 1 3 101 tip. The 1 refers to the size, 3 refers to the series of the tip, and the 101 is the, the fuel type, the torch type. You know what I'm saying? It's all made of brass, so you don't have to wail on the nuts or anything to tighten it. So let's use this chart here to set up the pressures. First, I'm going to open up the cylinders. There's a cylinder valve. I'm going to open that up two turns. And then I'm going down here to the acetylene. I'm going to open it up at a quarter turn. That way, it can shut off real quick, just a quarter turn away. Uh, so I'm going to set this regular in the oxygen to about 30, because that's what the chart says. And the other one I'm going to set to three. Now, these are not like set in stone. You know, people have different style so you can adjust those to touch it's just a recommendation all right so let's light up the torch how do we do that well we're going to open up the acetylene we use a spark just a little bit of acetylene now look at the smoke oh yeah don't use the lighter <laughs> your hand will blow up all right so hold on let's look at that smoke it's black smoke no black smoke so you add acetylene till the black smoke goes away till there's less and then you add some oxygen and then there's, so I start off with a uh, reducing flame, and then a neutral, and then oxidizing flame. The oxidizing flame is the least bright. Uh, and it only has two plumes, so it's a neutral flame. got two plumes, but it's very bright. And the reduction flame has, um, has three plumes. There you go. Carburizing is awesome. Alright, so let's uh, get through it. Oh, yeah, this torch has three knobs, so what do you use to control it? Well, the top one is another O2 knob, and what you do is the bottom O2, the green one, you open up all the way, and you use the top one when you're in cutting mode. When you're in welding mode, you use the two on the bottom. No problem. So let's check a look at these flames. There's a neutral flame. There's a reducing flame, so you can see three plumes on this. And then a neutral flame again. And then, see how it goes a little dimmer? Well, that's the oxidizing flame. Then I use a neutral flame to cut this. So you can see what I'm doing. I am heating up the tip there. I'm making sure that it's, uh, it gets yellow and sweaty and I can tell it's about to have fusion. So I'm going to be real patient. Then I hit the O2. And then I'm leave it. So I'm going to give it a little jet blast to cut through the metal. It's more like melting through the metal. It cuts it. Up a little square there. Fantastic. Turn that off. I do a little blast O2 and I'm done just to clean off the carbon on the inside of the tip. So that's it. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I forgot the welding part. All right, let's look at the tip of the welder. I use a 2W1. The 2 is the tip size, the W1 is the type of torch. So when in doubt, use the chart. So same thing as the other way, you use the chart to set your settings. Usually you put the O2 a little less, but... Alright, so we're going to review lighting again. Look, there's that black smoke. And it's gone now. Really bright. Maybe the O2 a little high. It'll work out just fine. There you go. Perfect. So, set myself up in a good, comfortable position. I'm going to start a little fusion bath here to show you guys what it looks like. Oh, and pop, whoop, it's going to pop twice there. What's going on? Oh, some students left the tip all dirty. So I'm going to go to the toolbox, grab this little tip cleaning tool. It's a nice little device. I'm going to use the file to file off the tip. Oh, man, that's weak. Uh, let's get a little leverage here. Hold on. There we go. Get a good file. Attaboy. <laughs> All right, then uh, I'm going to take a 
these little uh, needle files and I'm going to clean up the inside. That's probably what was happening. It's a little burn. If you have an O2 leak too in the, in the tip, it'll, it'll pop. It's just like a little temperature differential. Just goes pop. There you go. So, let's try this again. <laughs> Alright. My gloves on, all set. I'm lighting again. Look, you get to see this again. Look, black smoke, black smoke gone, neutral flame. Alright. Oh, so, let's get to the start here. I'm going to go over the old well just to see the fusion path. Oh, get in there. The plate, I usually, sometimes you can preheat the plate to make it easier on yourself, but this is hot, so I don't have to worry too much. There it is again. This fusion bath starting over. And, uh, yeah, it's hot. It's, <laughs> it's really hot. 3,000 degrees Celsius hot. So that makes the uh, metal melt. It liquefies. Because it's not just a little pool. It's a large area around it, too. That makes it brittle and hard. So, sometimes you have to heat treat it. Look, there's a heat affected zone. It's glowing when you're done. You get the molecular structure back in beneficial conditions. It's not so brittle, you know? Alright, here's some tips. Keep the tip on an angle to heat the material in front of the fusion bath. It's a little easier for you. No specific degrees, but something that you're comfortable with. Not too flat, not too brittle. Control the heat. Use the proximity of flame to, up to the metal to control the heat. Too big, back off. Too small, get a little closer. Definitely helps. It makes it smooth. There's another way to do it, though. Sometimes this is a little harder. You can try to manipulate the speed a little bit. It's too big, speed it up. Too small, slow down. And uh, also, look how I put the, the filament right. I dipped it right into the bath. And I... It was getting hot in my glove because the fiddle mirror was getting a little small. One inch is long, so I should have grabbed the one next to it. Anyway, that's uh, kind of hit that spot though. You got to see it. So, uh, that's about it. Oh, yeah, got to turn off the valves. So, how am I going to do that? I shut off the valves on both cylinders. I purge the line, regulators, and torch. How do I do that? I open up the little valves on the torch handle. Shh, you can hear it coming out. And I close the regulator valves to protect your seat. So you don't have to see one. If you want to mess with the next one, that's what you do. Looks good. Thanks, guys.